I'll try to make try to make a vlog. I uh, have come out here for the last several days and started to make one and got interrupted by a bunch of different stuff, rain, wind, and uh, that wasn't all that bad as people. It's getting to be summer, but uh, <laughs> one of those deals. Um, just waking up, the sun's just coming out. I'm just going to kind of talk about general stuff and YouTube and different things that I'm doing, what's up with me. Um, I, uh, I can see now that as many people have asked and as many people have hit the page, every time somebody wants to buy something that I've done and asked me where to download it at, I, I mark that in my email file and there's been a lot of them almost every day now, you know, so, but I'm not really in a hurry to do that. What I've decided to do is, uh, a, uh, I've ordered a few extra things so I can do mixes in, uh, 5.1 and 7.1 surround because I'm pretty realistic about all this stuff and, uh, having worked uh, and ran a studio and edited a lot of uh, film and video um, all the time and my stuff what I'm saying is belongs in films but all the time uh, I would be you know editing something and uh, they would have a terrible version of, of a song and I'd say, man, can't you guys do better than this? You know, this cover of this song? And it always, it's always, no, man, that's all we can afford, you know? Uh, it's expensive. So one of the things that my plan from the start was was to build a library of one person who owns the performance rights, uh, not the copyrights. There are two parts, the performance rights and the copyrights to a song. Um, so, um, but it, uh, I see no problem at all now with, uh, with this, and the people who've requested and, and labels, small and major labels and music managers and promoters and all the people like that who almost every day too. So, you know, I'm, try, I'm keeping it simple. I'm not really in a hurry for any of that. I want to be able to... One of the things that really made... You know, not saying I'm Pink Floyd or anything, but one of the sort of marketing aspects of Pink Floyd was that they, uh, in a time when quadraphonic sound... <laughs> quadraphonic... In a time when quadraphonic... Uh, I keep looking for somebody else to interrupt me. Uh, but when quadraphonic sound was the thing, there were two albums available in quad sound in that era. One was, I think, Philip Glass, Tubular Bells, and the other one was Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. And, you know, having a good grasp on technology at the cutting edge of it uh, is uh, a good way to... Uh, get your stuff out there, but more than that, I just want to offer the highest quality, coolest product anywhere available. Uh, so, I've got some uh, gear coming, uh, and I've had a tremendous amount of experience mixing in surround sound. So, you know, I, I, I want to uh, be able to sell uh, something that's high quality and different, and probably only available for a long time maybe downloadable we'll see i mean there's all kinds of issues with i'm not trying to be a millionaire <laughs> doing this you know although you know i can see within i mean the numbers are staggering uh, uh on youtube anybody uh anyway i'm trying to offer a very very high quality product and i could care less about money anymore i just want i love these songs and i want to uh i'm kind of chuckling to myself i want to do a great job not only you know not cruise ship versions but truly kick-ass updated versions of the songs with kick-ass and you know excellent sound 
Um, as far as YouTube, you know, YouTube was founded in 2005. I did the math down to the day. There have, there's now around 1.3 billion unique YouTube users. One in six, a little more than one in six people on the planet have a YouTube account. And, uh, love that morning tea. But, uh, there's, I think there's a place for everybody. But the numbers are, uh, I did the numbers down to that hour, actually. It's, I think it's 353,000 people every day join YouTube. I mean, if I could just take even uh, 10% or 5% of those people and turn them into people who, you know, discover the music that I do. And I'm going to get around to originals, uh, but, uh, if I could, you know, turn, I mean, there's millions of dollars in this, uh, business, and, but I'm not in any hurry to make money at it, you know, that screwed up my life early on, I started making a lot of money running studios, you know, and so much that I just forgot, it seemed like a miracle, you know, who makes, you know, 250 bucks an hour times eight rooms per room for eight, I mean, it's insane money, you know, so I got lured away from music by that and started producing and stuff, but, uh, there's uh, there's just so much stuff there. There's a, I think there's a place and a market for everybody on YouTube. Every kind of video. Um, they don't really have it figured out yet. It was founded by two people who worked at PayPal. And uh, there's a long story. I've been setting up bank accounts and stuff. That I have a long story about PayPal. Uh, anyway, use caution with, with them. You know, um, uh, there's a lot of stuff. I keep, I'm hearing things. I've been up. I did a Kiss song. I'm kind of chuckling. It's funny. It's fun, but you know, Kiss. It's just who didn't love them at one time. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been setting up. Uh, so I can do it officially uh, and sell stuff, you know. Eventually, uh, a, a DBA doing business as in a limited liability corporation and all of this stuff. And uh, and then making it easy to download and, and so on. Um, more people hit my Facebook page by accident than combined hit my YouTube pages. And, you know, part of the reason <clears throat> it's frustrating, I, I know it can be, because uh, with YouTube, part of the thing is, is that it has a really bad name, because the great thing about it is also the terrible thing about it, which is absolutely anybody can make a video. And so the competition uh, is stiff, as one marketing engineer said. They had a major major film company in LA that was doing major film releases and they would put their cutting edge state of the art trailers on the internet and they found that they really couldn't get any more than around 3,000 people to watch them unless they marketed them and the guy you know the marketing engineer said uh, that uh, it uh, that if you put a video on YouTube you know um, nobody will watch it because nobody can find it and uh, so you know for me I mean I, my stuff and marketing since I really one of the most impressive things about everything I'm doing is the marketing techniques that I've come up with and uh, you know uh, because without it I mean you know I'm, I'll be 50 years old so it's like I'm not interested in uh you know, going head to head with millions of kids with cell phones, or and most are not. Most people on YouTube are not professional, and they're sort of dreaming without any basis in reality. There's a lot of incredible people on YouTube, but it's frustrating. I wish they would separate it out between like, uh, and that's has yet to be seen. You know, between people who are actually worth, you know, doing something professional and people who are just playing, you know. 
and you know sometimes i like just crappy little cell phone videos that they do a great job on the song but uh there's just so much stuff there i'm pretty tired but um yeah i'm gonna offer uh a, a DVD with, with surround sound mixes on it and audio mixes and downloads and all that stuff eventually. I mean, I need to do, you know, I did one kind of on the new music business and how it works. And the bottom line is everything is on. I have no idea who that is. Everything is on YouTube. People post it right away. Um, but, uh, you know, a new album or whatever. And a lot of people, if you don't know how to download stuff, you know, you can download it and put it on your iPod, your iPad, you know, supposedly illegally. They know what's going on. But, you know, most people, the vast majority of people, only between 13 and 18% of people will download something and pay for it. So it's kind of the new radio. I mean, we had cassette recorders and, and recording devices listening to radio, so there's not really much difference. Um, and advertising has always paid for radio. But anyway, I mean, the, the, the bottom line is the more people, you know, if you present your stuff to uh, a thousand people that want it, that may be out of 10,000, but let's say this, if you, any artist nowadays needs to realize that if they present their stuff to a thousand people that want their album, you know, 18% of those people will download and pay for it. So there's 180 uh, units right there, you know. So the more, you know, at 10 bucks a shot, you know, $1,800, but multiply that by, um, you know, imagine if you, uh, you know, whatever, multiply that by a million. Uh, there's a huge and vast market out there. And I'm realistic. Really, my stuff belongs. I have no interest in touring to, or anything. I'm a studio player and musician. I mean, I can play live, but the requirements are expensive. Everything's expensive. And I've had a couple of offers from... Uh, you know, major label subsidiaries and so on. But if you're getting a record deal or, or going into it, you need three things. You need to have a release from that contract at some point. It can't be just indefinite forever, you know, uh, eternal. Um, and uh, there's just so much stuff to consider. You need to make sure that the album will eventually be released by the record company. It won't be just sat upon, which is my hunch what they wanted to do, one of them with mine, and then the other one. So you want to make sure that uh, it's going to be released. You want to make sure you have a release from the contract. And then uh, you, it's essential, the only, the only thing a record company has to offer an artist in this era is to put up the money for massive marketing. The only difference between, and I learned this in the music industry, it may start raining again, but I learned this in the music industry, the only difference between Led Zeppelin or U2 or any of these huge bands and millions of other bands is that these people had marketing going on and massive marketing and that's frustrating as a musician because the people who get marketed it makes it feel like well they're the official musicians and they're the big time stars and the big time artists well not really it's just because they were marketed the only reason that uh, anyone knows about Christopher Columbus is his son was a well-known Italian writer who journaled and published his dad's travels because, you know, he didn't... Te there were people before Christopher Columbus. The point is, is that Christopher Columbus had marketing. So that's a frustrating thing about being a musician. You know, um... With me, my page is being professionally marketed to 20 to 50,000 people every day and has been for a year now. And I'm, you know, it's really shown me that the other half of music is getting it out there and showing people what you can do. No matter how good you are in your bedroom or in the studio, uh, 
you know, without ever showing in the studio and then releasing it is one thing, but just in the studio making recordings that never... You're wearing on my nerves, Bird. Get out there. Uh, is, uh, you know, it's another thing. So really 50% of the whole deal. If I had to do my music career over again, uh, I would have put like 60, 70 percent in the uh, uh, the playing and learning to play all the instruments and sing and produce and engineer and all everything involved with that, and then another 30 percent in uh, uh, marketing and getting it out there because uh, you know I I don't care about money all that much, but for me, you know, people that I know or or it's just kind of being able to say, hey, I did that. I sell 100,000 units a year, you know, which uh, would, uh, you know, profit me about a million bucks a year, which isn't that much in this world. But it's uh, it's just kind of like saying, hey, I did that, you know. And, and money is the way we play in the, in, in the world, and we play in the big game. You know, nobody takes anything seriously until it makes money. It can spoil things. But, uh, you know, like the people I know, my family and such, it's one thing to say, yeah, you know, Eric's, you know, they don't even know this, or they, I don't even think they've seen any of my videos, not much, and paid no attention to me. But let's say that they did realize I'm a musician, and it's one thing for them to say, well, yeah, Eric's a great musician, he makes great, you know, music, but he's not making any money, you know, it's that kind of thing, but these same people will come asking me for loans at some point, you know, that's what happened in my studio business. Every single person that I went to college and tech school with, that bird's loud, said uh, that, oh, you can't do it, Hollywood doesn't need another studio. Well, within five years of opening my studio, every single person that I went to school with came and asked me for a job. You know, nobody was supporting me when I was working five jobs and sleeping in my car to buy the gear. Nobody gave a damn, but suddenly they all wanted to cash in on it. You know, so it's stuff like that, you know. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many times uh, I've gone to other uh, pages on the internet and seen stuff that I've done featured one of my songs uh, and or video, you know, featured or, you know, both. But, uh... It's so much now, it's crazy. And the number of people that, that check it out is really, it's been like the greatest thing in my life ever. And I've done a lot of cool stuff, but it's really neat. So I want to take it to the next level with, uh, you know, really high quality. Stuff. And it's made me get, want to be better and, and, you know, be as good as I can be as far as a musician and a producer and a player and singer and all this stuff, you know. To make better and better products because you know finally people are uh, uh, paying attention to me but that's I can't say finally they're paying attention to me it's finally I've decided to make some of the stuff that I've done and do public and promote it and, th and that's the toughest part of being a musician is uh, having the the uh, the strength to promote your own stuff and know when to get it out there and when not to, you know. About half the people on YouTube should probably know when not to get anything out there. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's been an incredible thing. I couldn't tell you how much it's changed me and uh, helped me to sort of see the light, you know, that, like I said, one of the main things, and it's not anyone's fault except probably my own or your own in your life, but the people around you, they, they, they may not support your art, you know, maybe for a lot of different reasons. I mean, I'm sure at some point I wasn't very good, you know, but even when I know that I was good and working professionally, they all have their own motive, motives, their own agenda, and what I'm saying is, it, this has really helped me to realize, like, the people around me are probably who have, I um, live completely alone now, but the people I've dealt with, even though they didn't mean to, they just really weren't my friends, you know, <laughs> they weren't trying to hurt me, they were just on their own thing, but that's distracting when you need uh, uh, some level of support, it, 
if not at least don't tear me down which t tends to be the thing you know um, so that's hard stuff I mean but uh, it's been a great experience and I'm just getting going you know um, I'm a year and some time in and uh, there's so much stuff I'm really tired but uh, I uh, I like to keep vlogs so that I can look back at these and sort of see where I was so where I was so I'm at the point of you know I was going to monetize some stuff earlier but I'm actually setting up my own server where people can download directly from me and uh, accounts where when they send me a payment they immediately get a download link and and now I have to mix a bunch of stuff in surround but that means I can put less like instead of I was going to put 69 songs on a CD but you know now I'll put like 10 on a DVD in stereo and in uh, surround you know and I think that's a neat thing you know it uh, um it's, it's offering something that's not really out there much. Um, so yeah, I've ordered all the gear to do that. No, I had to get a new air conditioner. Thank goodness I wasn't going to suffer through this year. Like a glove. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it for now. Where is this dang thing at? Oh, 21 minutes? That's about right. And these guys were one of the interruptions. There was some kind of assault over there, and the police were all over, and then they wanted to come talk to me, and then I just had to say, hey, I know nothing about it, you know. Um, then this woman over here died a while back. These guys seem to be staunch meth supporters over here. This guy is still a uh, <laughs> prescription drug addict. The dramedy goes on, you know. Um... So, yeah, I need to do something about uh, Mike Starr. I, I got interrupted. I was going to say something. Uh, Allison James, the bass player who died, I uh, was uh, in rehab with him a couple of times. And uh, that's how I found that song, Nutshell. I covered Nutshell anyway. Um, so, stuff goes on. Work continues. But, uh, yeah, you know, if anything it's shown me is that... Uh, it's really been super beyond words meaningful to have thousands of people around the world feature my music and follow me and, and put me on their Facebook page and all of this stuff. You know, it's, it's sort of snowballing bigger and bigger because I keep marketing it and because I keep putting in a consistent effort to do better work every single day. And I actually am. Yeah, some of the stuff surprises me when I hear it later. So... I'm proud of the whole thing, and I'm, I'm probably happier than I've ever been, you know. Not in a hurry to, to make money on it, but uh, I can see now that that's, you know, uh, that's not going to be an issue. And uh, one of these record labels will come back. What they want to do is basically license my stuff um, and promote it to be used in movies but <laughs> their offer was let us do nothing and offer you no money in promotion but take almost everything you make and I used to be a record exec so I was like you know that doesn't sound like a good idea why don't you come back with a legitimate offer you know and they will um, but uh, you know I mean there was a little something in it but not much for me and unless you're going to have your music promoted by a record company, there's no need to have the company at all. And that's what I'm thinking about. I don't. I may not need other uh, a record label unless it's a real sweetheart of a deal. What I'm planning on doing is uh, starting my own label, and I have experience in all of this stuff. So I plan on uh, starting to make some money, have my own label, and handle, uh, you know, sign other people and uh, show them the ropes but uh, yeah it, it's it's all really good I mean 350,000 people a day sign up for YouTube they have since day one it's it's as if uh, hundreds of cities the size of Los Angeles sprung up around the world I mean it's just incredible 
it's it's impossible to explain the numbers are astronomical with YouTube imagine that hundreds of cities the size of New York and Los Angeles sprung up around the world so uh, yeah that's where I'm at you know um, it's kind of exciting I, I'm, I'm uh, really having a good time I can't wait to get into these surround mixes although that's a technical hassle that's like nothing else but uh, it's a neat thing so vlog